Let's talk about balancing reaction equations. Get out your science notebook, let's get started. Here's the essential question that I would write at the top of your page. How do I balance a chemical reaction equation to follow the law of conservation of mass? Well, there's a lot going on there, but let's talk about what a chemical reaction equation looks like. Here's a reaction description. Magnesium and hydrochloric acid react to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. In a chemical formula equation, we might write it like this. Now notice here, our reactants are magnesium and hydrochloric acid. They're designated on the left side of the arrow, and the plus sign separates the two because they're two different substances. Also notice that we have phase symbols in this reaction equation. Magnesium here is a solid, and hydrochloric acid is something that is aqueous, which just means that it's dissolved in water. Now the products of this reaction are magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. If you take a look at this reaction, there's actually something wrong with it. Now, to understand this, we need to understand the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says that atoms are neither created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. The quantity of atoms have to be conserved. What do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look at what's happening at the molecular level of these of this specific reaction. I'm going to draw magnesium like this. It's just a little atom of magnesium. And hydrochloric acid looks something like this. It's hydrogen and chlorine that are attached to each other to create a compound of hydrochloric acid. Now, in a chemical reaction equation, these substances will rearrange themselves to form whatever's in the products. So let's do that right now. Let's take our magnesium and our chlorine and make magnesium chloride. Do you notice a problem? You might be wondering, where the heck did this extra chlorine come from? It wasn't in the reactants. And that's true, that's what's wrong. The same thing happens to hydrogen. This hydrogen from hydrochloric acid comes to make hydrogen gas, but there's now an extra hydrogen. Well, this isn't right. This reaction is not obeying the law of conservation of mass. And that's because it's missing a very important thing. It's missing a coefficient in front of hydrochloric acid. This two in the beginning represent a, represents a coefficient. It's the quantity of hydrochloric acids. And in this specific quantity, we would say that there are two moles of hydrochloric acid. And I'm gonna designate that by drawing two separated molecules of hydrochloric acid here. By adding that coefficient, we change our reaction and we obey the law of conservation of mass. Check this out. That magnesium and those two chlorines become magnesium chloride in the products. Those two hydrogens become hydrogen gas in the products. This equation now obeys the law of conservation of mass. But how do we do that? Well, we do that doing a process called balancing a reaction. And that's what we did. By adding that coefficient, we balance a reaction. And we're expected to know how to do this. Well, here are a few balancing tips in order to balance the reaction. The first tip happens before balancing. When you write a reaction, you first need to make sure that each chemical substance is written correctly. For now, we're gonna give you the chemical substance so you can assume they are written correctly. But later on, when you have to write a chemical reaction equation from scratch, that's an important step. The coefficients are written absolutely last in chemical equation. Now, when you balance a reaction, here are a few tips you should watch out for. The first one is to account for atoms on both the reactants and the products. And we'll show you an example of this. We can only change coefficients when we balance a reaction. Remember, we made sure before to make sure each chemical substance is written correctly. If we change the subscripts, then we change the chemical substance, which isn't good. If we see elements on multiple substances, it's probably a good idea to save those for later because if you try to balance it, it might screw up a lot of things. Sometimes things might become unbalanced when they once were, and that's okay, just keep going. The last thing is to treat polyatomic ions as a single unit. Now, if you don't know what a polyatomic ion is, I'll give you a hint for now. Look at a chemical formula. If you see more than two elements, there's a polyatomic ion in there. For example, right here, this is sodium nitrate. This has sodium, nitrogen, and oxygen in it. And sodium and oxygen, this NO3 right here, is called nitrate. It's a polyatomic ion. All right, let me give you an example of how this works. Here's our reaction, and here is the specific chemical formulas that are given. I promise you that these are written correctly. These have ionic bonds, these have diatomic elements and covalent compounds, and we'll slowly learn how to write these from scratch. But for now, I'm going to give it to you, assuming that each of the substances are written correctly. 
Let's make an accounting for both sides to see if this obeys the law of conservation of mass. Starting with the reactants, I'm going to write down zinc, and I see there's only one of them. I see only one sulfur, but I see two oxygens. Let's compare that to the products, and I'm going to stay in line. Let's start with zinc. There's one in the product side. Sulfur, there's one in the product side. That's balanced. But, uh-oh, oxygen. There's an oxygen here and two oxygens over here. Adding them together, that's three. The oxygens in the products are not balanced with the oxygen in the reactants. This reaction does not obey that law of conservation of mass, which is not good. It's our responsibility to fix that. And that's the whole point of these notes. So let's do that. I'm looking here, and personally, I do not like this extra oxygen right here. It's causing this side of the oxygens, the product side, to have an odd number. So I'm going to add a coefficient. I cannot, by the way, add a subscript right here, because that would change zinc oxide to not be zinc oxide anymore. But if I put a coefficient in the front of zinc oxide, that doesn't change the chemical zinc oxide. That just means I have multiple of that same chemical, and that's quite all right. So putting a coefficient here does affect multiple things. It affects my zinc. I now have two versions of zinc oxide. So I have two zincs and I have two versions of oxygen. So there's two oxygens here and there's still two oxygens over here. So my product side now has four oxygens, which is great. Two and four go into each other really well. I can fix that. But I'm going to hold off fixing oxygens for now because I just screwed up my zincs and I don't like that. Sometimes you might, when balancing one thing, unbalance other things. So I'm going to go back and fix that before it becomes too big of a hassle. Now over here, I'm going to go ahead and add a coefficient in the front. I need two zincs. I cannot just add a subscript here because that wouldn't be zinc sulfide anymore. So I'm going to add a coefficient up in front, meaning now I have two sets of zinc sulfide, which means I have two zincs and two sulfurs. Dang, I just messed up my sulfurs. So I'm going to go over here and try to fix my sulfurs. Again, it seems like it's getting messy, but I promise you if you keep going, things will start cleaning themselves up. So over in my product side, I'm going to add a coefficient of 2 in front of sulfur dioxide. That means now I have two sulfurs in my products, but my oxygens now completely change too. Good thing I saved those oxygens for the end. I have two oxygens in here in the sulfur dioxide, but I'm multiplying that by two. So I have four oxygens in my sulfur dioxide section, and I still have these two oxygens here in my zinc oxide section. So that equates to a total of six oxygens. So let's finally finish balancing our oxygens in my our reactant side. I see I have two originally, and two goes into six if I multiply it by three. So now we have balanced this reaction. This is a complete balanced reaction that obeys the law of conservation of mass. All right, here's a practice. I challenge you to pause this video right now and see if you can figure out what the coefficients are in this reaction. You can assume everything is written correctly. Um, and I do have a hint for you. There are a couple of, there is a polyatomic ion in here to watch out for, and maybe you can find it. Did you pause the video? Try it yourself. That's the best way to learn is practicing first and checking your answers. But let me go ahead and help you if you're struggling. I'm going to go ahead and account for my reactant side first. I see one sodium, I see one chlorine, I see one copper, and then notice I have this cluster of elements here, NO3. This is a polyatomic ion, and I know that for a fact because this copper two nitrate compound right here has more than two elements in it. It has copper, nitrogen, and oxygen. So I, instead of breaking this apart into nitrogen and oxygen, which I could, I think it's a lot easier to keep it together. Because look, I see that same NO3 over here, the same polyatomic ion. So I'm going to cluster those together. It's a nitrate. And there are two sets of that nitrate. All right, how, my, how about my product sides? I'm going to start with sodium. I see one sodium. Now I'm going to go to chlorine. I see two chlorines. Right away, we know this is not a balanced reaction. But let's keep going. I see one copper. And then look, there's my nitrate, NO3. But I only have one set of that nitrate. So I'm going to count that whole thing as one cluster. All right, let's try to balance this reaction. Sodiums are good, so I'm going to kind of skip that one. But our chlorines are not. I need more chlorines in my reactant side. So I'm going to add a coefficient and multiply that chlorine by 2. Unfortunately, that does screw up my sodium. So I'm going to go to the product side and fix that right away. Because they were originally balanced and I had to clean it. So I got to clean it again. 
So I'm going to add a coefficient in front of this product sodium nitrate, and that changes my sodium to be balanced. So my sodiums and my chlorines are balanced, but that does affect this nitrate right here. It multiplies this whole nitrate by two as well. So I'm going to change that from one to two. Hey, look, that actually worked out in my favor. I had two nitrates over here because of the subscript. Now I have two nitrates over here because of this coefficient. So everything is now balanced, and this reaction now obeys the law of conservation of mass. That leads us to the end of the notes. Take a moment to review and highlight key terms. Ponder, ask questions if you need any help. Summarize the essential question, and don't forget to go back and review your learning targets. Good luck.